Hi friends, it is your neighborhood Lady Splitchin um, with her shaky hands, which I will definitely talk about in the video. Um, I just wanted to apologize in advance because the audio for this video is garbage. It's very, very bad. Um, I got these new mics. They're Bluetooth and they worked really, really well the first time I used them, but after the testing and I went on to record the video, they sound like garbage. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to apologize for that. There, I couldn't go back and re-record because of the nature of this video. So I'm just, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what to do, but uh, please bear with me. Thank you. Hopefully I'll have this figured out for the next time I do a physical video. I'm really, really sorry. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video anyways, despite that. <laughs> so. I don't know if you noticed, but this video is a little different. Actually, in the new year and having a little bit more experience with editing now that I've had the channel for about half a year now, I want to make an effort to do a couple more physical projects. I want to do a lot of more traditional painting. I want to do a lot more sewing, things like that. Uh, yeah, here, here, here we are. We have a ton of 3D printers around our house. <laughs> and we recently, well I say recently, but it was like a couple months ago, um, got a resin 3D printer and he's been, he's been trying things out and it's a, it's, a little, it's a little Pikachu. <laughs> He's really cute. He's very, yes, Pikachu. <laughs> so I wanted to do a little silly little video of me painting a Pikachu instead of <laughs> what, what, else, what do I do? I don't know what I do. I had a lot of ideas when going into first play in this little guy. I thought maybe pastel Pikachu, maybe some pop art looking Pikachu. There are a lot of really beautiful Pokemon arts out there and I was inspired by it all. I lamented for a very long time over whether I should stick to traditional color palettes or if I should take a few creative liberties and when I finally convinced myself that it would be okay to do a non-yellow Pikachu, I decided to paint the Pikachu with the colors of the wrapper of this white rabbit candy. White rabbit candy is a Chinese milky creamy candy that was a staple at my grandma's house when we were kids. Actually, I personally was pretty neutral about it when I was a kid and I haven't had it in a long time so I can't say whether or not I would like it now that I'm an adult but I have always always thought that the packaging looked super pretty and having only a few colors would make the design process pretty easy. As you are seeing before I put any paint down I did a mock-up in Krita just to test the colors out. It wasn't my original intention but my partner pointed out that it looked like Pikachu but with a porcelain color palette which I thought was pretty cool. And now of course my digital drawing doesn't exactly resemble the final result just because digital drawing for one is a lot more forgiving than traditional paints and traditional paints are going to be a lot brighter than overlay layers. But yeah, this gave me a nice idea of what exactly I was going to do and where I was going to place the colors. So my first step was post-processing for the painted Pikachu. Now this little guy was printed quite a few months ago, so I wasn't super sure if sanding and acetone would really make a huge difference, but I did want to do my best. We do have a Dremel tool somewhere around here, but I've never used it before, and I was not about to test it on something with fine filigree all over the body. However, because I chose to sand with my hands instead of a tool, I wasn't really able to get all the tiny little bumps that were left from the support structures. If if you've never 3D printed something before, supports are pretty much exactly what they sound like. They're just extra pieces that are used to help support the object while it's being printed to prevent sagging or drooping or misprints if you have heavy overhangs or whatever else you've got going on. The supports are printed in such a way that they're supposed to be easy to remove. However, like in the case of my Pikachu, they can leave little marks where they were removed, which is what all the sanding and acetone is for. Ideally, I would be sanding down some of the bumps on his cheeks and the odd bumps in the filigree, but I just did not feel confident that I could maneuver the sandpaper in such a way that I wouldn't destroy the nice details. So yeah, I just sand down his chin and this area between his legs really nice and flat. And once the sanding is done and all the little resin dust is wiped away with some acetone, I get to put on some paint. As you can see, I've mixed an absolutely insufferable unmeasured ratio of white, red, and yellow to get an ever so slightly off-white color. I don't do a white base coat or anything because I 
started this project very late and I was in a rush to get any sort of base layer onto this bad boy. For these layers, I am using a battery powered airbrush and honestly it's a pretty impressive little device. It was just, I, I don't know, it was some random one off of Amazon and it does run out of power pretty quickly and it needs to be charged often so I wouldn't recommend it if you're going to use it for bigger projects but for figurines and minis it's pretty nice and convenient to use minus the occasional hiccup. That's actually very nice looking. Ah! Oh, this is why I can't have nice things. After I gave you such a glowing review to why do you have to be like this? Stay strong, Pikachu. Stay strong. So it's the next morning and this is fully dried. I coated him in a layer of uh, this <laughs> to sort of make sure that none of this white stuff chips off while I'm painting the next layers of blue on it. It looks really opaque in the camera, but honestly there are a couple spots where it's showing through. So I might try and go over that with white, but again, I mixed a white with yellow and red that is <laughs> going to be very difficult to replicate, which is my bad, but it, it's okay. It's, it's gonna get, we're gonna move on to the next step because if I keep messing with it, it's just gonna be worse, like most of the things that I work on. Ugh. And now we begin the fun part, putting in all the little details, which is horrible. If you don't already know, I have been blessed with a little thing called asthma and the need for albuterol coursing through my body from time to time to make sure my respiratory system continues to let air go in and out of my body. One of the very common side effects of albuterol is shakiness and Boy, howdy do I have that. <laughs> but I just hope that having like a smidgen of art technical skill would help me not absolutely destroy this piece. I went in with a much darker blue than what I did in the digital render, as you can see clearly. Ideally, I would have liked to go with a sort of in-between color, darker than the render, but lighter than what I actually ended up using. And that was my original intention. You can see on my palette, I have white, light blue, and dark blue available to me, but I put down the first marks and I I did not feel like waiting for it to dry and going back to fix it, so I just did it. It was a lot of trial and error, and I'm sure it was just because of the way the piece was printed and not a problem with the original file, but not all of the filigree turned out to be symmetrical. Some of it had been sort of squished or warped in a way, and some spots had extra bumps because of the support structure. and. I mean, looking at the renders from Filament's Follies, who I think is the original designer of this ornamental Pikachu, I just feel like my little guy is overall a little bit crooked. But he's still good, he's just a little crooked. Now enjoy yourself some peaceful painting montage. And now enjoy yourself some slightly less peaceful painting montage. I keep messing with it, it's just gonna be worse. Meow! But honestly, this project was just made a thousand times more difficult because all my paintbrushes are extremely old and worn down, and I needed a much, much smaller paintbrush to actually do this effectively, but I think we managed all right. And now for my reward. I put a little blush on the guy around his paws, cheeks, mouth, and nose. I wish I had some actual chalk pastels around, but it just wasn't something I thought about beforehand. I was going to add the blush with the airbrush at first, but with all the trouble I had at the start of the project, I didn't want to risk it. So first I went and got some sewing chalk and tried to use that on his face. Uh, it didn't really work, but then my husband suggested I used some actual blush, and I do have a single pink powder blush in my possession, and it actually worked really, really well. I actually went and darkened it up with some eyeshadow a little later, because I had more red eyeshadows. I still would have preferred to use chalk pastels, because I feel like I would have gotten the more bright coral color that I had in the render, instead of the reddish pink that I ended up with because of the limits of my personal makeup collection, but it still worked and layered surprisingly 
surprisingly well. So everybody tell Mr. Splitchin good job for that suggestion. I will definitely be doing several coats of clear sealant spray to make sure that none of that goes anywhere. And lastly, this surprise that I left out at the end of my render because I wanted to save it for the end of the video. I felt that the tail was very empty in comparison to the rest of the design and I felt bad leaving it white. But also, I was not at all confident in my own ability to replicate the designs on the existing body. So, I decided that on each side of his tail, I would draw two very important Pikachu and Ash scenes from the TV series. On one side, I would draw the very first meeting between Ash and Pikachu, and then on the other other side, I would have Ash winning the World Cup with Pikachu on his shoulder. On the physical model, I actually ended up switching which side each drawing was on. So as you can see in the render, Ash choosing Pikachu is on the right side of the tail, but in the physical model, I put it on the left side. I didn't change this for any reason, I just blanked out and started drawing on the wrong side. Clearly, I am very tired and not in the right headspace. At the time when I was rendering this in Krita, it seemed like a really fun, cute idea to have both of these pictures on the tail, but as I was actually working on the piece, yeah, it was about as difficult as it looks, and I was also cold and my hands were extra shaky. So sadly, it didn't turn out as nicely as I wanted it to, but I don't think I could get any nicer results unless I actually went out and bought a nicer set of brushes, which I absolutely at this point did not have the time for. But I did do my best and I wanted to make a nice homage, especially since Ashen Pikachu are no longer going to be the main characters of the Pokemon series. I wasn't actually allowed to watch Pokemon growing up, um, not like we had access to a ton of channels anyways, so I feel bad that I can't really give a very heartfelt speech or something about how watching Ash and Pikachu was such a big part of my childhood or anything like that, but I do think it's a beautiful series that has had such a huge sphere of influence anyways, and even I can get sentimental about such long-standing and iconic characters in the show giving way to new ones. And yeah, my little drawings leave a little to be desired when compared to the actual show screenshots, but I still think it makes for a beautiful addition to close out our very special Pikachu project. I really enjoyed working on this project for the last few days. I love how he looks. He is so stinking cute. And I can lament for hours about how I should have checked my brush inventory or I should have gotten chalk pastels or things like that. Personally, I think I did pretty good for this being the first model type thing that I've ever worked on. Yeah, I, I think I did great for the tools that I had available to me. I didn't want this to be a project where I had to go and get like special materials or equipment or anything. I just wanted to have a good time, make it a, make it a, little, make it a little guy. <laughs> I don't know, I would say I succeeded. It's not perfect. You know, there's, there's a lot going on there, but he's, he's cute, he's super cute. This has been a super nice, easygoing starter project for me to get into the swing of working on more physical projects this year and also helping me get more used to being on camera. <laughs> Um, I totally am open to revisiting the project. Maybe I could make a collection of little Pikachus. Like I said earlier, I had a lot of different ideas for designs and pastel Pikachu, oh, he lives on in my mind. And if you have any ideas that you would like me to try, <laughs> or if you print this yourself and you do a much better job than me, feel free to tag me on Instagram or Twitter or whatever else. I love to see the projects that you guys work on. I love reading the comments, reading that what I do makes you guys want to make more projects. That's always very heartwarming for me. Yeah, I just, I just love seeing what you guys are up to. But with that, thank you all so much for watching. I love and appreciate every single one of you. Um, and we'll be back next week with 
be draws, I think. Unless I get magically imbued with a zest for life and second wind after being stressed for this past week, which is very unlikely, but who knows? Not me. Oh.